Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we'll talk about the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus. What do they do? Well, it's the nerve supply of your lower extremities, pelvis, and perineal area. Where do they come from? From the spinal cord. The spinal cord itself is part of the central nervous system, but any nerve that comes out of the spinal cord is part of the peripheral nervous system. This video is part of my anatomy playlist, where you'll find more videos including another video on the lower extremity, the muscles of the lower extremity, and a video on the anatomy of the upper limbs. Now it's time to talk about the lumbosacral plexus. As you know, your nervous system is made of CNS and PNS. The central nervous system is brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. Spinal nerves are 8 in the cervical region, 12 in the thoracic, 5 in the lumbar, 5 in the sacral, only 1 in the coccygeal region. All spinal nerves are mixed. What does that mean? They have sensory, they have motor. Together. Here's a slice of your spinal cord. Anteriorly, you have efferent, which is motor. Posteriorly, you have dorsal, which is sensory. But then, when we lump them together in one spinal nerve, it is mixed. It has sensory and motor. And then the spinal nerve will divide into a dorsal ramus and a ventral ramus, each of which has sensory and motor. Which one is more important? Of course, the ventral. The dorsal is just almost nothing. I want you to touch the skin of your back. That's about it. That's the function of the dorsal ramus. It supplies motor and sensory fibers for skin and muscles of the back. That's it. Anything else is ventral ramus. How about my lumbosacral plexus? It comes from the ventral ramus. This ventral ramus is divided into anterior divisions and posterior divisions. Lumbar plexus, sacral plexus, coccygeal plexus. This is the spinal nerve. In the lumbosacral coccygeal area, the spinal nerve is gonna take the number of the vertebral body above it. So if this is L1 vertebra, this is L1 spinal nerve. Lumbosacral plexus is made of lumbar plexus and sacral plexus. Lumbar plexus has two main loyal sons, the obturator nerve and the femoral nerve. How about the sacral plexus? Two loyal daughters, sciatic nerve and pudendal nerve. Lumbar plexus, obturator and femoral. Sacral plexus, sciatic and pudendal. What's the sciatic nerve? It's a thick nerve and it's actually like not one nerve but two nerves lumped together. The tibial nerve medially and the common fibular nerve laterally. Do you remember the compartments of the thigh? Here is the beauty. The anterior compartment muscles are supplied with the femoral nerve. Posterior compartment supplied by the sciatic nerve. The medial compartment is supplied by the obturator nerve. Translation. The quadriceps muscle and the sartorius muscles are supplied by femoral nerve. Gracilis, pectineus, adductor longus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus are supplied by the obturator nerve. Moreover, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus are supplied by the sciatic nerve. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Oh, anatomy is just so hard and nothing makes sense. Oh, shut up. It makes sense if explained properly. Now let's leave the thigh and go to the leg. The leg also has compartments, but different kinds of compartments. Here you have anterior, posterior, and lateral compartment which is lateral to the fibula. The muscles of the anterior compartment are foot extensors. By extension here, I mean dorsiflexion. How about the posterior compartment? Foot flexors or plantar flexors. This way. How about the lateral compartment? Well, it's just next to the fibula. So we call them fibular and they cause eversion. What are the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg tibialis anterior? Of course, because it's anterior to the tibia. No kidding. Extensor Hallus is longus, extensor digitorum longus, extensor digitorum brevis, and perineus tertius. How about the muscles of the posterior compartment, which are the foot flexors or plantar flexors? Gastrocnemius and soleus. Never ever forget these two. Plantaris popliteus, the two P's. So the two sisters and the two P's. And then two flexors, flexor. Hallus is longus, flexor, digitorum longus, and tibialis posterior, not anterior, posterior this time. How about the lateral compartment? Lateral is the fibula, and the fibular is peroneal. So we have two muscles here. You can call them peroneus longus and peroneus brevis, or fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. 
What is the nerve supply of the leg compartments? Easy. Do you remember when we talked about the sciatic nerve? Yeah. And the sciatic nerve is made of two nerves, right? We have the tibial nerve posteriorly and the common fibular nerve. The common fibular nerve will subdivide into musculocutaneous nerve or superficial fibular and anterior tibial or deep fibular. The anterior tibial is for the anterior compartment. The superficial fibular is for the lateral compartment and the tibial nerve is for the posterior compartment. Pause and review. So who's going to supply tibialis anterior extensor, 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 and perneus tertius? Anterior tibial nerve. Who's going to supply fibularis longus and fibularis brevis? This is the superficial fibular nerve. Who's going to supply gastrocnemius soleus, plantaris popliteus, flexor, flexor tibialis posterior? This is your posterior tibial nerve or just tibial nerve. Here is the lumbar plexus. Here is the sacral plexus. How do we bridge the gap between lumbar and sacral plexus? There is a beautiful, beautiful nerve that bridges the gap, and this is called the lumbosacral trunk. Look at this beauty. Let's start by talking about the lumbar plexus. Okay, where does it come from? Remember, the posterior ramus is useless except for the skin and muscles of the back. Everything else is anterior or ventral ramus. So the lumbar plexus, of course, come from anterior primary rami, of L1 through L4. Where do I find them? Embedded within the fibers of the psoas major muscle. Each lovely lumbar spinal nerve is going to divide into anterior divisions, posterior divisions, anterior divisions, posterior divisions. If you collect the anterior divisions of L2, 3, and 4, you get the obturator nerve. If you collect the posterior divisions of the same L2, 3, 4, you get the femoral nerve. Remember when we said that the lumbar plexus had two loyal sons, the obturator and the femoral. This is the nerve of the anterior compartment of the thigh. And this is the nerve of the medial compartment of the thigh. Who makes the obturator anterior divisions of L2, L3, and L4? Who makes the femoral posterior divisions of L2, L3, and L4? This is so easy, medicosis. Hold your horses. It's going to get nasty. Let's do it again. Anterior divisions of L2, 3, and 4, obturator nerve. Posterior divisions of L2, 3, and 4, you get the femoral nerve. Next, let's start by L1. L1 is going to give you ilio, hypogastric, ilio, inguinal, genito, femoral. How about L2? You already know that anterior division of L2 is going to contribute to the obturator nerve. Posterior division of L2 is going to contribute to the femoral nerve. Add to this that L2 posterior division is going to contribute to lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Provides sensory supply to the lateral part of the thigh. Okay, medicosis, I got this. This is easy. No, you did not, unless you bring out a blank piece of paper and draw the lumbar plexus from scratch. Otherwise, I will smack your gluteus maximus. No pun intended. We're done with the lumbar. Let's talk about the sacral plexus. Who are the two loyal daughters of the sacral plexus? Oh, we have the sciatic nerve and the pudendal nerve. Since we're not talking about the pelvis and the perineum today, forget the pudendal nerve. Let's focus on the Sciatic nerve. Is this one nerve? Well, yeah, it's one nerve made of two separate nerves. Medially, tibial nerve. Laterally, common fibular nerve. Near the tibia, near the fibula. The tibial nerve came from anterior divisions of L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. How about the common fibular? Posterior divisions of L4, L5, S1, S2, and stop. There is no S3. S3 is only for tibial. The mnemonic is tibial is too much. Then it gets ridiculous. If you collect some posterior divisions from L4, L5, S1, you get superior gluteal nerve. Let's inch a little lower. So forget L4. We'll go L5, S1, and S2, and you'll have inferior gluteal nerve. Let's inch a little lower. So forget L5. Let's go S1, S2, nerve to the periforms muscle. What are the two loyal daughters? Sciatic nerve and the pudendal nerve. S234. L45, S123. Please draw it from scratch. Dermatomes. So, umbilicus is next to T10 and then T11, T12, L1. We're getting close to the genitalia from the front, but on the back, it's here. 
it's below the intergluteal cleft on the medial side only. Then L2, L3 is getting larger, L4 is getting ridiculous. L4 supplies the hallux, which is the big toe. Then L5, middle toes, and then S1, little toe. From the back, there is no thoracic here, so this is L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, getting ridiculous. And then we have two huge stories, S1 and S2. Have you ever seen a patient with sciatica? Yeah, they always complain of tingling and numbness on the back of the thigh, back of the leg. It makes perfect sense. Now let's take it to the next level. You remember that the lumbar plexus gave us what? It gave us the femoral nerve, the obturator, and lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Forget the obturator. Let's focus on the femoral nerve and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is going to supply the skin, so sensory fibers, of the lateral part of the thigh, lateral part over the femur. How about the medial femoral cutaneous nerve? The medial part. How about the intermediate? It is here. See, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve came from L2 and L3. Makes perfect sense. Lateral part of the thigh. Medial and intermediate came from L2, 3 and 4 which makes perfect sense. Where does the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve come from? From the sacral plexus, not lumbar, sacral. And the root value is S1, 2, 3. Here is S1 and here is S2. Let's talk about your foot. As you know, this is called dorsiflexion. This is called plantar flexion. Who's responsible for dorsiflexion? If you're talking about the root, it's L4 and L5. If you're talking about the nerve, it's the common fibular nerve or the anterior tibial or the deep fibular. If you're talking about the muscle responsible for this, it's mainly the tibialis anterior. How about plantar flexion? If you're talking about the root value, S1, S2. The nerve is the tibial nerve or the posterior tibial nerve. The muscles are the sisters, gastrocnemius and soleus. If you want to be super sophisticated, dorsiflexion usually comes with inversion, same nerve and same root. Plantar flexion usually comes with eversion. Dorsiflexion with inversion. Plantar flexion with eversion. What happens if I injure my tibial nerve and what happens if I injure my common fibular nerve? The two components of the sciatic nerve. Let's go! Tibial nerve is S1, S2, mainly S1. Common fibular is L4 and L5, mainly L5. So basically, you're comparing between S1 injury and L5 injury. You might think, oh, lumbar 5 and sacral number 1 are very close to each other. It doesn't matter. Shut up. It's a huge deal. It's a big difference. I injured my tibial nerve. Who's going to suffer gastrocnemius and soleus muscles? Therefore, who's going to suffer plantar flexion? If I can't plantar flex, what's going to happen? You will dorsiflex. And when you dorsiflex, you will never be able to walk on tiptoes. And you will not be able to walk downhill because you cannot walk on tippy toes. So when I injure my tibial nerve, I cannot walk on tippy toes. The symptoms caused by tibial nerve injury can be collectively called telepus calcaneo valgus. Let's talk about the injury to the common fibular nerve. Root L5. Who's going to suffer tibialis anterior muscle? Who's going to suffer dorsiflexion? If I cannot dorsiflex, I will plantar flex. This is called foot drop or high steppage gait. Because when you walk, you walk in a weird way. It's as if you're stepping on eggshells or something. You cannot walk uphill because you cannot dorsiflex. These symptoms are known as telepus equinovarus. Some quick notes about the Trindlenburg gait. First, let's talk normal, and then let's talk about the pathology. Normally, you have superior gluteal nerve and inferior gluteal nerve. Both are branches of the sacral plexus. L4, L5, S1. L5, S1, and S2. So, superior gluteal and then inferior gluteal. Here is gluteus maximus, here is gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. And then you crisscross. Normally, the superior gluteal nerve supplies the gluteus medius and minimus, but the inferior gluteal nerve supplies the gluteus maximus. When you are arrogant, you will fall. But when you have some humidity, you will rise like a superior phoenix. So what the flip is? Turindelenburg gait. 
Basically, this is a patient with injury to the superior gluteal nerve. When I injure my superior gluteal nerve, who's going to suffer gluteus medius and gluteus minimus? What's going to happen? Pelvis is going to tilt down towards the opposite side because you cannot stabilize the ipsilateral side because you lost your ipsilateral superior gluteal nerve and you have weakness of the ipsilateral gluteus medius and minimus. Now pay attention to the upcoming sentence because it's freaking gold. You ask the patient to stand on the right leg. Then the left hip dropped. What's the problem? Well, this is a positive right to Lindenberg sign, which means the problem is on the right side. The problem is with the right superior gluteal nerve and right gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. That's why the hip dropped to the left side. My YouTube channel has more than 1,400 free videos, plus some premium courses, which you can find on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com, such as the Surgery High Yields course, which will teach you about trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery with some fractures, acute limb ischemia, compartment syndrome with the Volkman contracture, and my emergency medicine high yields, which will teach you about ARDS, many cardiac arrhythmias, angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, and much more. The antibiotics course, the cardiac pharmacology course, etc. If you do not want to download my courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, then click the join button and choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos right now. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, my notes, and my cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.